Hi, everyone, and welcome to the End of Life Journey and Beyond, The Sands of Time. My name is Lisa Strauss lawrence and I am a bereavement specialist. Hello, Susan. It's been a little while. Happy and healthy New Year to you. Hi, Lisa, and to you as well. And I know you're around bouncing around the country somewhere, <laughs> but quite good. I'm very happy for you. And it's nice. It's a nice time of year that um, we've had a couple of breaks, a couple of weeks breaks in between and it's all good we're still moving forward so all of you loyal listeners don't worry about us we're still around that's right but today yeah. we're talking about of course we have to delve into something to do with the new year and taking steps to move forward and we did that last year in last year's video as well and it's it's a little different this year because we're thinking about really what we weren't going to use the word desires, but it really, it, it comes down to, we all have desires, no matter what you're going through in your life. And that includes grief. And that includes losing somebody in your life. And, and it could be just the desire to get up tomorrow morning and not mm -hmm. cry tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So desire is a big word, but we're going to break that down for you today. And I think we came up with about three steps to help you plunge forward into 2024 and hopefully by the end kind of fulfill some of those things that you thought about right now yes that's right so i'm susan caperso end of life doula legacy specialist and thank you for having us so let's just jump right in lisa okay so when you look at your desires sometimes people look really big i want to be happy in my life now or I want to stop grieving. Like, when will I be happy? When will I stop grieving? When will I stop being so sad? And I think that it's natural to feel that way. But I think what we need to do is look closer at smaller goals, smaller things that would be something that would either make you a little happier. Happy is a, is a hard word right now for those who are grieving. And by the way, my own husband's uh, anniversary of his death is coming up. It'll be 15 years. And I think, you know, differently as the years have gone by on how I have grieved, I still remember the, the death, obviously, and I still celebrate him all the time. Uh, but, you know, the desires each year change a little bit as you're further and further away. So time is an ally. Time is a friend. Um, and so at this point, you only know where you're at. Everybody's in a very different spot. So if we look at things that might be helpful or you might want in 2024, this is very personal. Some people have decided they want to move. They've had enough of being where they are. They're going to sell their house. They're going to move to a new place. Other people really want to meet new people. Well, how are you going to do that? So we're going to break this down a little bit. You have to look, number one, at an attainable desire. Don't do something that you know it's going to take a long time to get there and you may never get there. You need to look at something that is a smaller goal. Sometimes it's just I'm going to get out of my house or I'm going to join this club or I'm going to start making new friends or I'm going to start going to to a gym once in a while or someplace which might be a little bit more social than what I'm doing. So baby steps. Baby steps. That's right. Some we've talked about it, you know, walking around the corner. That's a big thing to get out of the house, maybe. But it, it, I'd like you to elevate your desire to something when you when you look at your life and you take sort of an accounting of 2024 and you say, OK, what would I really like in 2024? I mean, most people, especially who are grieving, say I'd like to be happier. Well, how do you break that down? What is happiness to you? We can't change, obviously, the fact that our loved ones aren't here anymore. So what kind of level of happiness do you want? Do you want more, more friends? Do you want more um, social occasions? To, you know, Only you know what you would really like. I mean, you, look, we all know resolutions. People say, I want to lose weight. I want to, you know, be happier. I want to, you know, there's a listing of all the things that I want to exercise more. But when it comes to somebody who's grieving, yeah, we look differently. 
we do. We look differently because our lives are different. Yeah. And I think, I think though, the goals for the new year are definitely different uh, and rightfully so they should be different. It shouldn't be the typical weight loss or I don't want to drink as much wine or I don't want to, it should be something more meaningful. I think after the loss, yes. meaningful meaning. Okay. So now it's, it's me again. And what have I, I wanted to do maybe over the last yeah. 10, 20 years of my life? And I never had the chance to do it. Right, right. And as silly as that may sound, okay, it could be something like, I'll give you an example, like a language, right? Say you always wanted to learn Spanish, okay? And that's something that you've always wanted, but you never thought about, you never had the time Find that within yourself. Look for that thing that you always thought maybe you'd wanted to try or wanted to do. Now that's not gonna, it's not going to involve you getting out there into the world and facing scary things that you really don't want to do at this point. But that's something that you can do from your living room or your kitchen table. And it's learning a new skill. It's learning about something that you at least always had a little desire for. And it doesn't have to be something as big as that. It could be something as big as painting. You know, I, I always painted my whole life. And now I haven't painted anything in 20 years. Yes. You know, yeah. so that could be a, a baby step. Yes. But it could be yeah. a goal that by June, I will have my first real beautiful live painting done yes. and that though that may take a number of steps too sure. sure right getting to michael's or or wherever you buy your paints uh go spend in the afternoon on a saturday looking for the things you need setting up a space in your house that might take you weeks to do that <laughs> because we know that everything takes us a little longer sure. to do when sure. we're grieving sure regardless of of working I had to go back to work pretty much right away. Yeah. You know, so you may still even be working and expected to grieve in that process as well. It, it, These things are important because it's going to bring you back to yes. loving yourself and loving life a little. Yeah, there's a dichotomy in that working thing. I found that I was glad that I had a job that I could go back to. Mm-hmm. It gave me an opportunity to make some normalcy and gave yeah, me a, a lot purpose. of people say that gave me a purpose, gave me a purpose. So, and again, there's, you know, good and bads to that, but, um, the same thing, you know, any artistic thing like sewing, you might've been sewing when you were younger, or you might've been sewing your kids clothing, but now maybe you want to learn sewing and you want to do quilting or you want to do some other thing like that. You know, right. it's it's interesting. In my second book, and I just realized it, in my second book, I talk about um, what happens after. I go through chronological. So the first year, the second year, the fifth year, the 10th year, and all that. And of course, things change. But many of the people who I interviewed said that they did things that they had always wanted to do, but put it off. And once they realized that they didn't have the time, because of the loss and they realized that wait a minute anything could happen anytime they turned around one person went to college one person started dating again and got married I mean there's a lot of things that people do because they realize that things are not permanent and that anything can happen at any time so sometimes this actually puts you in a situation where you say to yourself I better do something now I better, you know, hey, I really thought about going to, you know, whatever travel that was. And now I'm really going to do it. I put it off all these years. And now I am going to do it. It's the whole life is short thing. And we all feel it, no matter who you are. I, I had met a girl through one of the events that I did, uh, a woman, you know, my age. But she was not married. And she lived with her mom. Mm -hmm. um, and for many, 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 many years, and they were best friends. And what they did together was um, traveling was their mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And she told me the cities and the countries mm -hmm. around the world that she's been to with her mom. Wow. So now her mom passed and it was a shocker. And oh my gosh. So she lost 
her traveling buddy. She lost her best friend. She lost her um, family in the house at night eating dinner alone. Nobody else was in the house, just the right. two of them. Right. You know, she lost so many things. She continued to work, just like you said, because it, it took her brain uh, to yes. focus a little bit. Right. Um, but one thing that I know that she's done that has brought her happiness is she continued that traveling. Yeah. So she yeah. found these tour tour groups. Yes. Um, with um, sing with single people or just yes. women, yes. just women. That yes. was important to her. So she continued to take trips over the last few years, and that's bringing her happiness and able to celebrate her mom. That's a great time. story. And I have researched that too. There's a woman tribe uh, group that travels, there's a single women's group. There's a whole bunch of different groups that do that. That's such, that's really great to be able to continue yeah. to do the things that you enjoy, even though that person who used to enjoy it with is no longer there. But exactly. That's so let's, Lisa, let's yeah. talk a little bit yeah. about um, how, I mean, it's easy to say. Yes, yes. For all of us. Oh, yeah, yes. okay. <laughs> I'll think about what I, but let's put a structure in place. Okay. You know, should you get a notebook out? Uh, how do you come to these decisions yeah, on I, what you're going to focus on? Well, I think one thing is start writing down the things that you used to love, used to enjoy, maybe used to do you know, a while ago. I mean, I used to crochet and don't crochet anymore. I used to sew. Now I sew again, you know, so you can write down traveling. I've always loved to travel. I will continue to love to travel. Um, and so write, at least write down the things that you enjoyed or try to think of the things that you like. You know, there's got to be in there somewhere, even just getting together with friends. Maybe you don't do that anymore. And maybe it's something that you want to get back to doing. So at least start accounting for some of this, okay, in some way. And write down some ideas and then write down some steps. Because getting there, as you said, like the painting, getting there is, is sometimes half the battle. So write down the steps that it's going to take to get to where you want to go. Okay. Now. You know, getting getting back out there in social is, is really difficult to begin with. But one of the things that I focused on was making other people feel good. You know, whether it's complimenting them, spending time with them, um, going out to dinner once a month with them. Not necessarily because I wanted to. Because sometimes we just want to crawl up in a ball, a ball and we don't care what's to come um but i when i purposely knew that i wanted to do for other people um it was a good thing you know it's fulfilling to be able to do that when you're not grieving to begin with but to do things on purpose like that it's it's helpful i think you need to break down what blocks you from doing it if you write down and you're very clear, I'm afraid, you know, I won't be happy there. I'm afraid that I won't fit in. I'm afraid that this, you know, will be terrible. You know, when you write those things down and they're right in front of you, they're not as bad. It's it's really the, it, it's not knowing or it's not planning. Fear or, of the unknown. Yeah, right. of course. And we all feel that way. And when we're grieving, Goodness, it's multiplied. So writing down what blocks us gives us an opportunity to understand better what we might be afraid. Of. And when you see it in front of you, you might say, you know, not so bad. Or, you know, maybe I can get through this. Or, you know, maybe I'll try this once. And if it doesn't work out, okay. I, I try something else. But if we're clear about it, I think, and honest with ourselves, I think that we can cope better with what we have ahead of us and what we're doing. You know what that just took me back to? Right. And I know I brought this up again a few weeks ago. Um, the woman whose daughter was killed. Yes. yes. Was murdered, yes. let's say. Yep. Uh, and she was so impressive. And, and, and 
I would look at her and think, oh, you know, I want to be like her. Yeah, I know. Me I want to think like her. I want to feel like her. I know. You know? know, and and that is really, you know, that's something that you need to work on because it's not natural. I think she's the rare gem. She is. She is. What but it's courage. an attitude of gratitude that we yes. all want in our yes. lives. And yes. The only way to get that is to make that a goal and work on that. That's right. That's right. So one little technique is power words. So you mm. look and you say to yourself, okay, what are the impressive power words that will keep me focused, that will keep me on my on my plan, that will propel me forward, that will help support me, you know? Um, I haven't I done this. I know a couple women who have. And... And it was really powerful. Yes. Yes. You know, for me, it's just, I deserve to be happy. I deserve this. I, you know, I don't want to be unhappy the rest of my life. You know, I obviously go back to what my husband said, which was very helpful. I don't want you to live alone the rest of your life. And that's what he said to me before he died. And that's such a powerful thing. It is, but we gift. all don't have that. That was a gift. That was a gift. Many people don't have that. Though. I know that. That I, is definitely a gift. And people yeah. need to say that to their spouses for sure. They do. They do. So yeah. what's the powerful word or type of words that propel you forward? You know, um, I believe in me or I believe that that I deserve something more. Um, you know, I have faith in myself. Um, a very good friend of mine passed away I and know. you know what her power word was for her what? last year what legacy yes. yes it was legacy and she worked to leave a her legacy. mark in history and she would say it all the time nice you know so she did follow this little this yes suggestion that you're making yes and yeah. it was important to her. and isn't it funny that was the last year of her life but she did leave a legacy. Yeah. And then remembering her, that legacy goes forward. Of course. In all of you who cared about of her. Of course. And her. Yeah. Of yeah. course. And she had an online um, TV yes. series. And, you know, people still are looking at it on YouTube. And we can see her speaking all the time. That's a big legacy in itself. That is amazing. Right? That's wonderful. Yeah. So there must be other power words that you can come up with that are yours and that are uniquely who you are, for the person you are and what you've gone through in your life and all. Um, and so come up with those words that will help you fulfill this and make this happen. Um, and again, steps. We're not looking at, okay, all of a sudden now we're going to Europe, <laughs> you know, um, maybe we just have to get out of the house or something, but, you know, I think that we're all hard on ourselves and we need to give ourselves a little break and say, Hey, it's all right. And we're going to take good care of ourselves. Um, and we're going to make sure that we, um, look out for ourselves. So, um, be kind and caring to yourself and it's okay to up and down and nothing goes straight ahead. So it's all right to fall a little bit. Okay. I, I felt uncomfortable. So, all right. I, I left after an hour. I went to this place, you know, it's like my friend, she went to a party and she wasn't sure she was going to feel and she wasn't sure I was going to be and, da, and she, um, it turned out better than she thought it was going to be, you know, and people did talk about her husband, which was really important to her because people sometimes don't. And that's very hard. It's harder that way. So she she was a little surprised that it was okay and that she was very happy that people remembered him because that was important to her. So again, so, so find the things that you that you like or that you've always liked. Mm -hmm. Make a list of those. Keep a little notebook on those. Uh, find your power word. Right, that's really important. The steps. And what would your takes, next step be? The, the steps. Go through the steps, you know, want to sell my house. It's been a couple of years since my husband died. I want to sell my house. All right. What am I going to have to do to do that, to make that happen? 
You know, you're going to have to go through drawers. You may have to donate things. You may have to, you know, give things away. You may have to do consignment. What is it going to take? Because the big picture is overwhelming. But if you look at the steps that it takes to get where you want to go, okay, it's manageable. So do that. Yeah. And if you're unclear and unsure of that, because many people are, then talk to a friend or somebody in the family and tell them, you want to take the steps to get from here to there. Help me figure that out. Yes. What do I need to do to get here from here to there? Because other people sometimes think outside the box when you, when you can. That's true. That's true. And pointing out, you know what? I like that a lot because pointing out that you need a support system. Get those people behind you so that you don't feel that this is all on your own. Those support people. And it just has to be one or two people who you know, know you, that love you, care about you, believe in you. Get those people because support is so important. Even accountability. I said I would do such and such. All right, now my friend in the month says so. Did you do that? You know, it's an accountability as well as the support. So obviously be kind to yourself and this is not easy. None of it's easy. So, um, you know, don't, don't get yourself crazy. Um, it's all right. Whatever failing means to you. I don't know what failing means because to me, everything's a lesson. You know, this didn't work out and I'm not going to go here, but I learned about this now and maybe this is better. That's fine. It's not the end of the world. Much, most of the things are not the end of the world, period. You know, yeah. they feel like it to people, but it's not. So yeah. um, if we can do something for people in 2024 and help them to find something, a purpose or a goal or a desire or something, we all know we're still grieving. It's 15 years. And on the 30th, I'm going to wear purple because he died of pancreatic cancer. And I'm going to wear purple and I'm going to watch the movie and I'm going to do the things that I do. But I've moved along in my life. I've moved on with my life. And obviously it's 15 years. It's a long time. But every year I've seen the changes. I've seen the growth. I've seen how life goes on. It does. It goes on. And now it's a matter of you deciding, okay, am I going to go on with it too? Right? Or not. You don't or have not. to. But then how sad. You know, that would, that's a shame because you do have a lot to contribute. And you can bring new things into your life. You really can with the things you learn, the way that you grow, new career, new friends, new city. Change new is things. hard. Ch nobody yes. likes change, okay? Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that any of this is going to be easy, but I am saying that you deserve a life, that you deserve to find something else. It is going to be different. It will always be different. But to have something that looks nice and that feels good and that makes you smile even just a little bit is a wonderful thing. And you deserve it. We all deserve it. So, Well, those were some great tips. Was there anything else that we discussed that you want to close with? Or no, so, well, I just want to, I want to recap so everybody knows okay. you're selecting something that is something that you, would make you happy or make you feel better. You know, happiness is a funny thing. Um, we're looking at the steps that it takes to get to that point, okay? We're looking at the things that block us and the fears because writing them down makes them real, you know, whatever those fears are. And then we're looking for the power words that help us move forward. I deserve this. I, I want this. I, I believe in myself and I believe I deserve this. You know, so some kind of power thing that will move you forward that you can always fall back on and make that happen. So, yeah. So that's. And then go on Amazon and find a little sign that says just that <laughs> and keep it right in your kitchen so you can look at it every day. Which reminds me, there's nothing wrong with doing this vision board thing, which people do do. Um, like Oprah Winfrey does. Um, so a vision board, just really quick. It looks like a science uh, fair board, you know, with the little three sides and you get it at any Michaels or whatever. Um, and you start cutting out magazine pictures of things that you'd like. Maybe it's pictures of travel. Maybe it's pictures of friends. Maybe it's pictures of things that you'd love to do. 
Um, you know, we mentioned all the art type stuff. And you put that on the board and you put that in a, once you're finished with it, you make a collage. And once you're finished with it, you put it in a strategic place that you'll always be able to see it. And they say that the more you see something, that's your vision. The more you see something in front of you, the more real it is. And the more you can make it happen. I did that. And exercise. That could be your springboard. Sure. That's right. That's right. I did that exercise with kids and they loved it. You know, so any age, yeah. any stage. And that's that might be a really nice way of supporting your desires and your efforts. So I just thought I would throw that that in because I remember that. Very oh. good. Thank you. So that was pretty good. I hope you got some uh, great tips today. Yeah. Yep. Because you, you always, the more information and education that you get, the more you learn and the more that you'll grow and take one baby step at a time and move forward. So thank you for joining in. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Lisa. Happy and New Year, Susan. Well, I know we're already a few weeks in, um, we but we have a lot to look forward to this year and a lot of surprises coming your way. So thank we you did. for joining us today yep. and we'll see you next week. Sounds good. Take care. All the best. Bye.